Hey everybody, Sean James here from My Self Reliance. Welcome to the cabin. So like I've said many times, I'm not an expert on knives or axes. I don't consider myself one, that's for sure. Uh, but I do know the basics. And I'm gonna get into my complete uh, axe collection, or most of my axe collection in a few minutes here. But just wanted to go over the basics of an axe first. The, the uh, components of an axe, or the anatomy of an axe. So this is the bearded camp axe that Toronto blacksmith made for me. And you saw the uh, big uh, broad axe in another video. If you haven't, you can click on this video up here to watch that. So basically you have your handle and your head, of course, the axe head. Um, so of course you've got your blade or your bit, which is the, the front of the axe here. The bite, part that bites into the wood. You have the eye, which is the hole here that the axe goes through or sorry, that the handle goes through. You have the pole, which is the back of the axe. You have the toe, of course, which makes sense, right? So if you look at that, there's your toe and there's your heel. Toe, heel. Also makes sense. This is also called the beard. And it's because, of course, when it's sitting like this, it drops down. Now this is actually defined or described as a bearded axe because the beard is pronounced so you can see it drops down where most axes just come straight across this has a deeper face like longer uh, bit about four four and a half inches four and a quarter four and a half inches so for the size of this axe and the weight of the head which is only I think it's about a pound and three quarters it's a pretty um, broad uh, bit here and it's quite thin as well this face, sort of face of the axe is called the cheek, which again makes sense. So if you look at this thing as a face, you got or, uh, you got your beard, you got your face, you got your pull, you got your eye, which is the thing that, it's the shape of your eye, of course. Hey Callie, what were you doing down there? You look excited about something. So that's called the handle or the haft. Typically they're made out of hickory, which takes impact a little bit better, a little bit more shatter resistant, but ash is quite hard and it makes a pretty good handle as well. You're looking for straight grain all the way through. You don't want it flaring off. You can see that grain follows all the way down. It doesn't taper off. A lot of them in a cheap rack especially will kind of taper off. The grain gets spliced off so you end up with a lot of end grain all the way down the axe and that's a weak point. It's a spot that can splinter. Now at the bottom of the handle you have the knob which flares out to stop your hand from sliding off the end. You have your grip, this is the throat, where you have this dip in the uh, handle or in the haft. Then you've got the belly, and again, if you want to put the axe kind of like that, makes sense. And then, because that's the head, this is the shoulder. So that's the basics of it. Now, typically the back of an axe, the pole, is not hardened. And in this case, uh, Toronto Blacksmith has not only hardened it, uh, he's also polished it as well, so it looks quite nice. That's now can be used for driving in tent uh, pegs, for example, or stakes, because it's not going to deform. So typically, that's left basically this part of the the axe head, the the bit section is hardened, but that makes it a little bit more brittle. So the rest of the axe is less less hard, and therefore it's more malleable. It's not uh, prone to to uh, break or like shatter so that's left soft but the problem with that is with a typical axe if this pole is not hardened and you start hammering on it or using another an axe or something to hit the back of that to drive it through a piece of wood it'll deform that eye that eye will actually kind of squish in or shatter but typically it'll squish in because it's soft and that uh, handle will, will come loose but this is a hardened pole I like that because I don't want to always have to remember not to hit the back of the axe if I want to use it for something, especially a camp axe. I won't do that with a uh, felling axe or a carving axe, but if I'm uh, taking a camp axe, I want that to be multi-purpose. Multi so I like having that hardened pull. So that's the basic anatomy of an axe. Now I'll show you the collection that I have and why I have them and which ones I, I prefer to use and which ones I can do without. So I'm going to start, I guess, from the biggest and work my way down, or the the uh, most specifically tailored, I guess. So you've seen this chopper one splitting maul, splitting axe that I've been using for the last 
six months or nine months. Uh, this has become my go-to splitting mall, splitting axe. I've been using it for, uh, I don't know how many cords I've done this this winter, this fall and winter, but an awful lot. I love uh, the uh, ease of use of it, the lack of, uh, the reduced energy that you need to use it. It's quite a heavy axe, but with that little mechanical system, it uh, does a good job with the least amount of energy. So click on this video up here if you want to see a little bit more about it. So I don't have to go into as much detail right now. So that's my splitting, go-to splitting mall. What's missing from here, and I don't know where it is around here somewhere, it's just an old style uh, splitting maul with with a three pound, three or four pound head. It's just a wedge basically and it does a good enough job as well. Uh, for felling trees, I've used a few axes this year for felling trees. Uh, for knocking down, for cutting down the bigger trees on the on the property here. Uh, the maples in particular are hardwoods. Maple, like sugar maple, red maple, and yellow birch are the hardest trees I have here on the property and the odd oak. Um, actually I did cut one oak down with this. That's uh, kind of a main axe that uh, you pretty well need if you're doing this kind of work or living this kind of lifestyle. You want a good solid big felling axe. In fact you could get away with probably just that if that's all you could afford or the, oh, that's all you had access to. It's just one axe. It would be a big uh, felling axe with a a 32 inch handle I, like I've got here. So in the same category I have this big Garant cheap axe fiberglass handle and it's uh, something you can just pick up at a regular hardware store. Um, it's quite common here in Canada I think at the Canadian Tires and Walmarts or something. So that's a 35 inch handle on that and what I have it for, what I use it for, it's quite dull. But I use that for cutting roots on the, in the ground where I don't want to use a good axe. So I don't mind, um, especially in this rocky ground up here, quite often I'm going to hit it off rocks. And there's no dings out of it, or a couple small ones. But like I said, there's lots of trees I need to take down right down at the root system, especially if I'm clearing a site, building site like this. And for the workshop coming up, I need to get those roots out or get those trees out right down from the roots. And you really don't want to be putting in a... Even if it's if, um, using a chainsaw or something, I'm not going to run the chainsaw into the ground. I don't mind sacrificing this cheap axe to do that. Um, I mean, you can sharpen that up. It's not a great wedge on there, or it's too blunt a, a wedge to really bite. But if you take that down a little bit, put a little bit sharper, uh, narrower, thinner wedge on there, then it actually could be used just fine for, a, for your go-to axe, your standard axe for taking down trees and cutting trees up. So this axe here is council, one of Council Tool's newer axes. It's made in the U.S. A lot of people like that. Again, I'm not real happy with the way it's been ground. It's kind of a general purpose utility axe. I think that's a 25 inch handle or 27 inch handle on that. Yeah, 27 inch handle. Uh, so similar to that, here's an opposite style. An old uh, two pound head. 25 inch handle it's been really badly abused over the years you can see the the uh, toe is pretty much uh, rounded right off here it's been pounded into the ground probably a number of times I picked this up years and years ago at a grad sale and it was already in that condition so I just use that for splitting up uh, little branches or something or I used to use it I haven't used it in probably two years or three years now I get into the smaller axes, the axes that are a little bit more convenient to carry into the bush. So to put it in a backpack or uh, take it on a longer trip or something, get down to these forest axes. This is a Gransford's Brock Scandinavian Forest Axe. I think this, what is it, a two pound head or a pound and a half? Maybe a pound and three quarters, this head. Uh, fairly straight, like 90 degree uh, bit. I like that axe a lot. It's got a very narrow wedge and that does a great job of biting into softwoods, taking down some hardwoods with it as well, but it really excels in, in uh, on smaller spruce trees and fir trees and pine trees and stuff like that. So it's great for limbing as well. It's a nice light axe. Uh, I like the handle uh, length. I like, like the nice big butt on that for, for uh, stopping your handle, your hand from sliding off the end. 
And like I said, it's just a well-balanced axe. It does a great job for limbing and for taking down small trees. So, and for taking it into the back country. Okay, if, uh, what else? I've got my small carving axe. So, this is, this is a Halter Force classic axe. A 0.5 um, kilograms. So just over a pound actually. Nice small little handle. Let's see over a measurement on that. That's uh, nine and a half inches. So really it's not something I'd recommend carrying it carrying into the bush to do any real um, you know bushcraft or survival type stuff. I mean it can could be used for that. I actually end up using that more for skinning game because it has a real round bit here, real curve to it. Yeah, it is quite uh, easy to sharpen and maintains an edge pretty pretty good but it's a little bit more blunt than say the forest axe or the the bearded axe from uh, Toronto blacksmith um, and I'll use that for notching on the logs or doing some fine woodworking fine carving stuff it's a nice light balanced thing but again it's just too short too light ahead to really do much uh, serious work good for limbing mind you if uh, you need to get in close and limb something like a balsam fir, like these trees that I've got around here, there's so many branches on it, you can get in close or a spruce or something. Now, when I get into hewing up the logs, squaring timbers, which I did, I did some of that work last year, um, especially debarking and then squaring up some, taking off, for example, on these logs or some of the other logs, taking off the high points on the log. I want to get it to flat basically and smooth and level. Harder to do that with a two-sided axe or a double uh, bevel axe because you don't get a flat spot. These hewing axes, and this one's made, custom made for me by Toronto Blacksmith as well. It's only beveled on one side and you can see it's actually flat along this whole side and then on this uh, this side, that's where the eye kind of comes in a little bit more. And then you have the bevel ground onto this side, but this side, like I said, it's completely flat. So what that does is allow you literally to get right along, like that's sitting flat right on that edge without uh, the bevel kicking it off at a, a fraction of an inch. So that allows you to square that timber up. Nice big long face so that you can get a lot of wood coming down especially squaring up a log from above when it's lying horizontal so you can get uh, a nice straight edge all the way along that log. I will be hewing average probably 12 foot logs on the next project on the workshop project so that's going to come in very handy. Now when you get into the smaller hewing stuff these axes were made in Canada and there's thousands of them around still. It's basically a hewing hatchet. Same thing this is a right-handed model so it's flat on this side or essentially flat on this side and then the bevel is ground only on this side of the axe flat on this side so again that's for going along either this way or along this way to flatten out that log or take any high spots off so i've got two or three of these things lying around actually um, it comes in quite handy for doing little stuff I use it quite often on the logs uh, on this cabin to take off branches and take off high spots all right, so those are the main axes that I have. Like I said, I've got a few other ones lying around. I wouldn't go out and buy these now, and I don't recommend that you go out and buy 10 axes or whatever I've got here, plus the other four or five or six that I've got lying around. Um, if you're only um, going to buy one axe, I would make it something like this, and it handle from 32 to 36 inches, whatever you find comfortable, whatever height you are. Um, of course, the taller you are, the probably longer you're going to like to get a good swing on that, especially if you're going to use the same axe for splitting. I find that uh, a good all-purpose axe that I could use pretty well anything. Um, hatchet's always nice, so something a little bit bigger than that. So maybe the Scandinavian small forest axe or or the uh, the uh, the spirited axe from from Toronto Blacksmith. He has a number of other uh, cool axes and nice small axes that are good for general uh, small camping trips and stuff like that but also for limbing and things like that there's always hatchets are great i like carrying hatchets something you can especially with a smaller handle shorter handle and a little bit smaller head something you can put on your belt and carry with you all the time instead of relying on your knife in fact if you can do that i recommend always carrying a, a small axe and a and a knife 
on all of your trips so if you do get um, lost or you get into situation a survival situation you've got two great tools that can uh, help you build a shelter get wild game or, or uh, uh, cut firewood and things like that so uh, things that I use for specific purposes like I said I've got this uh, any standard cheap splitting maul wedge shaped is fine as well they're gonna really uh, t make splitting a lot less effort and a lot more efficient rather than trying to use a standard uh, felling axe like the, like the first one that I showed you there so I would suggest if you're doing any amount of wood processing that you're gonna have a splitting uh, maul in addition to your felling axe and then something for limbing would be ideal as well so like I said a hatchet of some sort you know 18 16 to to uh, say 24 inch handle would be would be ideal for that um, if you're getting into hewing and that's very very uncommon thing these days to square timbers then of course you're going to want to get something awesome looking like this if for no other reason it looks cool and uh, there's other, you can pick up some old cheap, um, well, you're lucky if you can find cheap ones these days because a lot of dealers are picking them up from old barns and, and auctions and uh, grad sales and stuff, refurbishing them and selling them for, you know, $100, $200. Um, and variable results. So, you know, it doesn't mean just because it's old, it's, you know, automatically good steel or well-made. Um, I like Toronto Blacksmith personally because he's nearby and I know he does great work and he's going to stand by it if I have any issues. So that's it. Hatchet, uh, felling axe, uh, some kind of mid axe if you don't want to go with either the felling axe or the or the hatchet and then a splitting ball. That's what I use. That's what I'd recommend if I'm forced to pare down to, to one axe. I guess it's going to be the 32 inch or 35 inch felling axe and uh, I'm going to try to to uh, make sure I can always get a hatchet in there as well. So that's it. That's what I use. Like I said, I'm no expert on axes. There's lots of great videos out there, lots of experts to, to uh, check in with if you want to learn more about axes, the different styles, the different uh, manufacturers, the different steels and so on. Um, uh, that's not me. I'm not that expert, but uh, stay tuned. Maybe in a couple of years I will be. If you have any questions just uh, comment below I'll try to get back to you or ask me a question on Facebook or Instagram I tend to find those uh, messages a little bit quicker and and uh, they're easier to sort through if I'm going to an try answering you so you might want to check in with me there and also don't forget to tune in every Friday for the cabin series videos and uh, randomly throughout the week whenever I get a chance to post a video like this I do that as well so thanks for watching and I uh, will see you next week up here at the cabin take care